Hey, hey, party people. As requested, I'm doing a first impressions video on these Viviva color sheets. They are super vivid, transparent watercolors, and they're basically sheets of color, watercolor, okay? They're super, uh, supposedly super concentrated sheets of, you can see that they're about as thick as cardstock. You know, it's like about as thick as cardstock on cardstock. Very, very thin. The whole, uh, the whole point of these was for portability. Okay, if you watch the Indiegogo campaign, uh, the whole point is portable paints. And yes, they're very, very small. I have quite small hands, and they fit in my palm or in my hand, and. So for this video, I'm only going to be using things that I carry around with me when I'm painting on the go. So I'm using, um, this is a watercolor book that I use when I'm running around painting. It's a moleskin with a cold press watercolor paper. I bought one, I used it all up, I really loved it, so I bought another one. And, you know, this is me trying to practice uh, flesh tones with watercolor pencil, which I'm not really great at yet, but practice not magic. <laughs> all right, so we have these, and then water brushes, okay. And a paper towel, I always carry a little paper towel so I can wipe clean my water brushes and then I don't this is a teeny tiny thing of water so far I have had no reason to use this but I carry it around I bought it at Sakaido on my first trip to Japan last year and it has this cool little clip so supposedly you can clip this and use it as a little thing of water if you need water and I carry it around just in case, but I haven't used it yet because <laughs> the water brushes usually work well enough. But I have this here just in case. And uh, let's do this. I've not played with these yet. All right. Let's start by swatching these colors. There's 16 colors. Apparently, they're fast drying. They have these... Um, they're color coded. So if you're looking for your reds, they're right here. And if you're looking for your browns and golds, they're right here. Here are your blues and greens. Apparently you're not supposed to uh, use what the colors look like here as any indication of what the paint is going to look like because the formula is apparently so concentrated that it affects the way the colors look in the on the sheet. But these are more what they're going to look like when you're painting with them. So I thought it was smart to have that color coded there. We'll see if it holds to be true. And there's your purples and pinks. And then these partitions between colors, they say they're water repellent to avoid sticking with wet colors. Pretty smart. Uh, recommend you let the colors dry before closing the color sheets. Safe to use. Don't eat them. And uh, wash your hands afterwards. All right. One swipe. Whoa. What is happening? That is beautiful. What the hell? You saw that, right? It was just whoosh, 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 whoosh. Oh, that's so pretty. Shut up right now. What? Yeah. Oh my, oh my. What? That's. 
You guys, somebody's getting excited. It might be me. What? I want you to be very aware of the one, two. I didn't dig into the color. I just, yes, that fart noise was necessary. Here's the flush. I don't know whose skin is that color. I mean, that's very yellow. Okay. All right. I'm not sure who's that skin color, but I'll tell you just as a color, that's freaking gorgeous. And then you can see how the color changes once you add the water, like the outer veneer is becomes different. They say it's fast drying. Oh, that's pretty, that's almost dry. It's just slightly damp now. Ooh, chrome yellow. Wow. Gold ochre. So pretty. Burnt umber. That's closer to some skin tones than that. The only thing I find funny so far is there's some like colors that are too similar to each other. Like these two, I mean, this one gets really yellow, but like these three, like these three, I feel like you could have done without one. Or maybe it's, the outside coating. Maybe we need to do another swatch. <sighs> also super pretty. And you see how I don't add, I just keep letting the water come out and it's lightening, but the color intensity is still pretty awesome. I kind of want to redo those. I think I got a little bit a little bit. Can you go back and do things? No. It's dry, y'all. You know, when he said they're fast drying, he wasn't fucking around. This is Viridian. Yeah. Yeah, see, so how you see how it looks purple on the sheet, but it's Viridian. Here we are with the peacock blue. That one's a little bit weak. Let's pick up a little bit more. <gasps> okay. <laughs> Overload. Oops. Oopsies. Whew, that's pretty. Mm. I'm trying to keep these kind of open so that they can air dry. So I'm not just like shoving them all closed. That's why I'm kind of holding them a little bit funny. Here's Persian blue. Let's pick up a little bit more. Whoa. Those two blues, you need to pick up a little bit more. Yeah, this one has a slightly greener undertone than that one. But, yeah, you, know, you just pick some up and maybe you just have to get through that top coat. Here's the violet, which looks green. Ooh. Gorgeous and intense and amaze balls, or should we say amaze sheets? Sheets of amaze. Yes, I made that joke. Here's magenta, which is more of a rose Tyrian, I think, but whatever. You know, I say this all the time. It's like when you guys buy things at the store, don't look so much at the color name because people name colors willy nilly. Like, they don't care. They just name it whatever they want. Ew. I love how that black has a purple undertone to it. Can I get a little bit more intense? Yes, I can. So, it does say on the label that they're transparent colors. Okay. Really quick, I want to do something. Because... You know, sometimes with makeup, 
you have to break through the outer top coating layer to get to the true color underneath. Not all the time, sometimes. And sometimes that's true of certain paints. And I think this one might be the same way. So I wanna try that. I wanna see if that's a thing. I'm gonna really quick get in there and see, and just kind of get in that same spot and see if the colors remain the same. Wow, okay. This one is the Pentel brand. These three are Pentel brand. In previous videos, you may have seen me use the clear and green ones. Those are from Sketchbox. I haven't really seen a big difference in the two in terms of performance. Okay, so here we go. All right, so kind of digging into the color after the top initial top coat, if there was any, didn't really make that much of a difference. I still think that, you know, the deep pink and the crimson are a little too similar and that the flesh, the chrome yellow and the gold ochre you know, they're kind of too much in the same family. And the burnt umber, the burnt sienna, those are great. Like these three, they're different enough. Although push comes to shove, like you didn't, wouldn't need the burnt sienna, you need the burnt umber and the vermilion. You could mix the two to get the burnt sienna. Okay. And then you could have like a chrome yellow and then you know, you would add a little bit of vermilion to get the flesh and a little burnt umber to get the gold ochre. You know what I mean? Like once you understand colors, you don't need all those colors. These are quite similar. And then these are very different from each other. So I appreciate that. But this one, this Persian blue, you could probably have gotten by adding a little bit of this to that. And these greens are gorgeous. I think a little, they're different enough. Although, you know, you see how I added water here, how this color looks like this. So you just keep adding water to get this. So maybe you didn't need both of those. The magenta and the purple, very different from each other. Both really beautiful colors. I did a slightly better job painting with that one there. And then this slate black is so... It's not potent, but you know, the labeling says they're transparent colors, so it's fine. But it's got this beautiful indigo purple undertone to the black, which I really like. I think that's really pretty. So, so far, what I want is like a true green, which I might be able to get in here. I'm just going to grab a little of this paper I got. Uh, this is new to me. Windsor & Newton Cotman watercolor paper, 140 pounds, 300 GSM. It's got this texture. I like to label the bottom side or the top side when I pull sheets out of a pad. Anyway, let's try to get that green color that I want. More of a straight up green. I love how they look now with a little bit of the paint pulled up. Looks really cool. So I'm gonna put down some water. I'm gonna put down a little bit of this sap green. I'm gonna pull up some of this. All right. You can get a really beautiful green. This is sap green and viridian, and you're getting this really beautiful grass green color. Mm. I like that. And yet you're missing a straight up yellow, but honestly, you can just use a lot of water with the chrome yellow to get a really nice yellow. Just add a little bit more to get the punch. So there's that. What else am I missing? If you want like a more ultramarine color, you can mix, I would go peacock blue. 
and the violet. Wow, that violet is really overpowering. Let's add some more of that blue. Yeah, because the blue is kind of weak. Like you had to swipe a few more times to get the blue going. <gasps> Oops. Good job, Zoe. Good job. So now you're getting more of that ultramarine color. That's why they said let things dry. But you know, the thing is, is like you're painting and you're going back and forth between colors. Like how practical is that? Anyway, let's try to do a wash now that we have all this color mixed up. It does dry fairly fast. Like the, you can see the edge of the original puddle. I have to kind of scrub away at it to create this fade and not let the previous edge of the puddle color show up so much. Kind of really scrubbing it with my water brush because I want the gradient. That's nice, the, the paint quality is quite nice. Okay. I'm gonna take a really skinny brush now and play with some thin lines. I'm not a calligrapher. I've never studied calligraphy, so. I mean, my penmanship, if I'm actually paying attention, isn't bad. Emphasis on the part when I'm paying attention. <laughs> I did Korean calligraphy for like a hot second when I was a kid. But that's a very different thing. I could never do the pickups at the end. Because the thing is, with Korean brush calligraphy, you can't you can't put your arm down on the table, but you have to get those those pickups. <laughs> it made me bananas. I feel like my hand just shook really hard right there. Yeah, you have to have that graceful pickup. Whatever. Thin lines, nice washes. It does try on the fast side, so you want to watch those edges. Okay. The palette takes an extra second to dry, but again, it dries pretty fast. But flipping back and forth is kind of annoying a little bit. All right. Now that we've done that a little bit, let's layer some of these. When I am illustrating, garments, I tend to shadow with a darker version of the same color instead of grays or other neutrals because I want to keep the vibrancy of the color. Okay? If I'm doing something like a really dull denim, then yeah, I want to shadow with grays to keep that dull neutral tone going. But if I'm shadowing something beautiful like this vermilion, I don't want to dull it down with a bunch of grays. And so what I usually do is I just use a darker vermilion to shadow it. And typically I wait for layers to dry before I add a shadow layer. So now that these are dry, oh, that was fast. Uh, let's put in a second layer. but you're really, it's layering beautifully. Can I soften the edge a little? Yeah, well, not right there. The lighter areas I can. Fruit umber is a little bit on the weak side. I'm gonna have to work with it. But the burnt umber I think can make some really nice flesh tones <laughs> as opposed to that neon, thing previously called skin tones. 
It's got this weird orange edge. Let's try to blend that out a little bit. Will it blend out? It will, but now we have this yellow splotch. Oopsies. And now I'm overworking things. <laughs> I should have tried to blend that out when everything was still wet. I blended this out when it was wet and that looks nicer. I mean, you should really be doing, working on everything when everything is still wet with these, I think, if you want. Like, if you want the blended look, everything, the shadows need to be placed when everything is wet. If you want just the color on top of color like these, then, you know, do it when it's dry. I recommend for beginners that you just put in a shadow after everything is dry because you'll still get the 3D look with the correct shadow placement. I mean, blending is a slightly more advanced skill. So work on making things look 3D first and then go into more advanced painting techniques. You know, learn to walk before you run. Conquer one, move on to the next, conquer another, one step at a time, sometimes literally. I'm wondering how much I can paint before it runs out. Because I'm kind of, you know, sort of tapping into the same spot. Because I also want to see how far I go before I hit the paper. You know, in makeup terms, when you hit pan, when you hit the bottom of the pan of a blush or eyeshadow, when you got to hit pan? I don't know, but these things look so cool. The layers of them drying and getting wet and being worked with. Like, I like, I want to take pictures of these and put them in my sketchbook. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know that the Peacock Week is blue. I'm just in the habit of starting light and adding more as I need to. Because it's easier to fix mistakes or when you paint in this way with watercolor. I mean... <laughs> That violet is happening. Oh, I love pink. I mean, I practically live in black, but I love pink. Let's see how opaque we can get on this black. It still has like a really cool undertone, which is kind of rare actually. Most, I mean, I've not seen a lot of blacks with this kind of purplish undertone, which is kind of cool. Bum, I love that. I love that. Dun, 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 dun. Bum, 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 bum. And I'm going to paint a cylinder, which I do for when I'm testing everything because, you know, fashion illustration people wearing clothes. We're a series of cylinders. That's how I taught wraparounds and, you know, the whole shading with different media series. I had a, a shading basics and then a shading with marker, shading with color pencil, et cetera, et cetera, series. And I demoed them all on cylinders because those that application can be used for all kinds of things, for drapes, you know, drape flutes for sleeves, for pant legs, skin tone around necks, arms, you know, that kind of thing. So they're all cylinders. Sometimes they're shapely cylinders. Sometimes they're, you know, tapered cylinders. Let's try. Let's try wet on wet technique. Wet on wet technique, wet things on top of other wet things, okay? Very difficult wording. All right, let's lay down some water. And as you know, you cannot just, with wet on wet technique, reminder, you cannot just put water anywhere just because you can't see it because the paint will go wherever the water goes. So you have to make sure that you're only laying down water where you eventually want some of the paint. And you just tilt your head so you can see the shine of the water. And I'm going to pick up some of this magenta without squeezing the water brush. 
so that I can just get as much paint as possible. Ooh. So I'm going to push this towards the highlight and then I'm going to clean my water brush of some of this excess pink and then we're going to soften that edge and move the pink around. Clean that edge a little bit. Clean my water brush. Try to make my water brush drier and pick up some more of that magenta and add a little bit more on this side to add more color here. And then again, clean out your brush squeezing the water and then kind of push the pigment and blend and soften and blend and soften and yeah wet on wet it creates a really soft beautiful look but it can be a pain in the butt <laughs> it's very finicky and then let's try a wet on dry up some of this sap green and clean out my brush, blend that edge. I think I'm picking up some of this like cardboard bits from the paper here. Add some more of that Viridian and move that around. I don't know if that's the paper or the paint, but it's kind of going everywhere. Mm, just weird because I didn't put it there, but it's just going there all by itself, which is annoying. Look at me making mistakes like I'm some kind of like normal human who makes mistakes. <laughs> I hate everything about that. <laughs> I want to play with that some more because I want to see if it's just going to keep bleeding. I want to do it on this paper too because this is new to me paper. This I've been using. I'm used to paints just staying where I put it. All right, there's that. That one is done kind of dry-ish. Not a whole lot of water. Let's try this one with more water bit more wet gold ochre this one is chrome yellow see again like they're so similar like why did I need both of those and we're gonna pick up some of this crimson kind of on the dry side God, this color is so pretty someone make me a lipstick in this color please I lied I probably have it I think you guys don't even want to know how many red lipsticks I own Okay, and we're gonna take this pink, deep pink, a little bit more wetly. Honestly, who said this was pink? I mean, maybe it was just bleeding because I kept adding water to it and being annoying and then the paper just wasn't holding it. And they're like, enough! We have too much water here. I'm gonna add some water. Oh man, I'm all out of water on this one. Dun, dun, dun. I guess this is what this is for. Ha ha. Okay, see, there wasn't that much water there to begin with, so now the water's not moving. That one, there was more water, so now it's moving. And yeah, you know, I do recommend that you guys do all these funny, strange experiments with your own paints. Not just with new things, but just look at your paints and see what they do. 
See, look at that. That one, you add water, it gets darker. That one, you add water, and it gets lighter. What is... <sighs> Things you learn about stuff. <laughs> oh my God. I almost spilled my water. I was laughing so hard. Okay. Look at that. That is so funny to me. Some of these look like I haven't made a dent and some of them look like there's nothing left. Like look at this sap green. Did I really use that much more sap green than others? No, I used the blues more really. That was so fun. All right. Final thoughts on the Viviva color sheets. Okay. I am having a blast with them, and I am definitely taking these out. They're really portable. The quality is really nice, and so I'm really looking forward to actually running around with them. Too bad that I'm not traveling for a while. <laughs> I'm kind of staying put this summer and getting some projects done. I did a lot of traveling in the first half of 2017. But, um, yeah, I will be carrying them around the city and painting whatever the hell I feel like because this is so much more portable than even the brush pens or the watercolor pencils that I normally use as my portable paint option. These colors are beautiful and vibrant, and they work well with my current favorite watercolor paper sketchbook, which is the moleskin. Um, but again, the draw bracket, the drawback is some of these colors are dupes for each other. And so in, instead I would have liked some different colors, you know, maybe a, a really different red here and maybe just like a straight up yellow that I don't have to manipulate with water and maybe a cooler Brown on top of these two brown choices, and then maybe like a straight grass green instead of two yellow greens, and then maybe a different blue instead of two very similar blues, okay? The color choices are not ideal. The quality of the existing colors, pretty good. I'm having fun with it. You know, if I don't know the final retail price for these. I know the Indiegogo campaign has been backed completely and then some. And so I'm, I'm assuming that these will go into production. And uh, so I don't know the full retail price of these, but if you can afford them and you are someone who enjoys painting on the go, then I would suggest you actually try these out. Oh, look at that. Look at that peacock blue. Once you like remove the top coat, you really get that peacock blue. That's pretty. These things are pretty. And they're they're th well thought out despite, you know, the color options. Anyway, this was so much fun. And uh, yeah, you guys know that I've been hauling and shopping all over the world the past few months. And so you can expect some other uh, first impressions and product reviews videos. Give this video a thumbs up if you are into first impressions and product review videos and thought this one was helpful and fun. And uh, subscribe, share, comment, you know, because you love me, probably, hopefully. <laughs> All right, get back to work, get back to painting, and I will see you in the next video.